I now would like to consider a special dis spherical distribution of charge. I want a very thin shell. This is a thin shell of charge plus Q on this shell. And I want to show a very interesting result. That we know that outside the shell, this should just look like a point charge. But what about inside the shell in region 1? So here, let's choose a Gaussian surface where radius r. Now, what we know is, when we apply Gauss's law, that the electric fl the flux is equal to the charge enclosed, that there is no charge enclosed in our Gaussian surface. Now, by the symmetry, you could argue that E is going to point either out, might point like that, on both sides. It could be conceivably non-zero, so it could point all the way in there. Um, but in that case, if the electric field pointed in everywhere there, and that's just a conjecture, then this side, because this is, if we just conjectured this, now it won't be right, but we're just making conjecture, the unit normal is out, this side would be E plus, with a minus sign because they're in opposite directions, times the area 4 pi r squared, by symmetry, it has to, if it pointed in, it would point in everywhere. If you set these two sides equal, the only conclusion is that this field inside of a shell is zero. And that's a very important result, that the electric field inside a solid shell is zero. Now, in this example, a typical question might be, let's look at our shell, and let's put a charge Q somewhere inside that shell. Now, we've claimed, which is true, that the force on this charge is equal to the electric field times the charge, and that's zero. But that seems very counterintuitive, because isn't this charge closer to a lot of charge on the shell over here and so that positive charge should exert a force on this. And since it's closer here, well, shouldn't that be a non-zero force? But if you think about it, let's just look at this. Let's extend this out and consider this part of the shell, too. Now, the charge is uniform. And what's interesting is the call this 2 and this 1. The area of 2 is proportional to the distance squared. That's part of the sphere. So the area on 2 is proportional to the distance squared. The area on 1 is proportional to the distance one, r1 one squared. But the electric field of 2 goes like 1 over r2 squared. And the electric field on 1 goes like 1 over r1 squared. And the total charge is proportional to the area. So dq2 is proportional to r2 squared. But the electric field is really is the product of dq2 over times dq1. And you can see that the factors of r squared. This area is bigger by r squared, but it field falls off by 1 over r squared. And so these two effects. The effect of E2 and E1 exactly cancel, and that's why the field at some point in the center is zero by this symmetry argument, and so the force is zero. So even though it's closer to this side, this side still feels a force, say, in the opposite direction, and those two things will balance, and you can divide up the whole shell that way. And that's why this surprising result that the electric field is zero inside the shell is proved directly by Gauss's law. The symmetry argument also shows the cancellation. Let's consider one more spherical symmetric distribution of charge. Here we have a thin shell plus Q. So this is a thin shell. And we'll just denote the radius of the shell by A. And we're neglecting the thickness of the shell. And we're going to surround that by another thin shell of radius b 
where we have a charge minus Q. So we have two thin shells. And I'd like to find the electric field everywhere in space. And we have three regions of space. Now, I want to do two of those regions very quickly. So for the region three, I'm going to pick a Gaussian surface of radius r. And in region three, there's no charge enclosed. So the electric field inside is zero for zero less than r less than a. Why? Because there's no charge enclosed in our Gaussian surface. If I do the same thing in region one, so for r bigger than b, our flux equals q enclosed over epsilon naught. Well, the flux is the usual. Let's just conjecture that there's an electric field. We don't know yet. We'll just conjecture, but it has to be radially outward. So this side would be E1 times 4 pi r squared. But the charge enclosed is plus Q, this one, and minus Q, the outer one. And so that's 0. And so once again, we conclude that the electric field outside the shells is 0. And this is r bigger than b. And now, if you wanted, you could think about this as a superposition problem, where you just calculated the field of a negative shell and added it to the field of a positive shell outwards. Both shells act like point charges at the origin when you're outside them. And so the sum of those two fields will be 0, because one is negative, the other is positive. We just did it in one fell swoop with Gauss's law. So now region 2 is the one that's of interest. And I pick another Gaussian surface. So this time I'm picking all of my Gaussian surfaces on the same diagram. It's sometimes nicer to see them separately. And now we're in the region R less than RB. And we apply Gauss's law to this region. And what we see is that the charge enclosed, all of the inner shell is enclosed in the Gaussian surface. And so we get E2 times the area of the Gaussian sphere is equal to the total charge plus Q divided by epsilon naught. And so our conclusion is Q over 4 pi epsilon naught, 1 over r squared r hat for the field between. And once again, this result is no surprise, because in this region, the inner shell acts like a point charge at the origin. And that's the electric field of a point charge at the origin. And now you might ask, what about the outer shell? But we've already proved that the electric field inside a shell is 0. So the outer shell makes no contribution to this inner region. And we just have the field of the inner shell treated as a point charge at the origin with its characteristic 1 over r squared radially outward direction.